It's definitely Friday, folks. Welcome to the show. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Film Festival Live, of course, filmfestivallive.com. Uh, we are live streaming on all of our platforms, uh, YouTube, a couple of Facebook Lives, uh, Instagram, all kinds of different places. Wait a second. Now, I just got the ding, which means I have to turn off my email because I don't want to hear that throughout the whole show. Uh, today, we have a great show. I'm very excited. We have two guests. I'm very excited. Uh, filmmakers. Today is Filmmaker Day. Why not? Friday, Filmmaker Day. I love it. FFF. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. It, too bad I didn't do it last week because last week... Friday was Friday the 13th. There it is. Anyway, uh, three times a week, we come on, we talk about film festivals, filmmakers, actors, all that fun stuff. We don't talk much about actors. I don't really need the competition. I don't need the competition. Yeah. Anyway, uh, one of my guests is uh, laughing in the wings. Um, but anyway, as a professional actor of 40 years, I've decided that it's probably best to stick with the behind the scenes stuff, giving everybody the tips and tricks and what they need to do to be able to um, take their own power in their own hands. Because uh, what a week. Let me let me tell you why I said that, taking your power in your own hands. First of all, let me go to my audio here. Hold on one second. There we go. Um, one of the things I want you to know is, is that I talk about this all the time. I get this conversation from actors. And the subject this week I really would like to say today is going to be a little bit about um, seating. I call it seating. Lots of my friends in, in Hollywood and, and New York and wherever around the world producing films or shooting them or being actors always talk about the fact that, well, nothing's coming in. I don't have auditions. What's going on? What's my agent doing? What are we doing? And, I, and I'm always uh, a person talking about being proactive. You got to get in there. You got to do it. You got to get her done, whatever. Well, you know, I had a big conversation with some of this week about seeding, which means that we spend 99.9% .9 of our time unless you're luckier, uh, out there trying to get people to like us and not meaning they work with us as an actor. And so we submit demos. We, we can't do much marketing, you know, that they'll let us do. Otherwise, they kind of go, oh, another actor. But the fact is, is that we spend a lot of time doing this and that part of it can be very depressing. But I'm here to tell you that if you change your mindset a little bit and change it to what I call seeding, I mean, Look, if you put seeds in the ground today and you go back tomorrow and you're like, what the hell? Why isn't there a tree here? Then you're probably in the wrong business, okay? You either don't have a green thumb or your, your expectations are way too broad or way too specific that you think that you're going to be overnight and things are going to grow. It takes a while. Sometimes it may take years. Sometimes it may take your lifetime. You have to decide whether or not you can go that route. So we'll talk about that later on the show. Later on the show, Sal, of course, my partner's coming on and talking more about film festivals because there are a lot of them. And if you're not involved at a film festival in some way, shape, or form, you probably just started in this business. So here's your lesson. Our lesson today, our first guest, I'm very excited. Uh, her name is Linda, and she is a filmmaker. I'm going to bring her on in a second, but first I want you to see Linda Wong's um, demo reel on a short that she has done. Now, it's three minutes long, so I'm going to cut it short, but at the end of the show, I'll end by letting you watch the whole three minutes if she lets me. So here we go. Hang tight. Do not go anywhere. Watch this. Honestly, I don't think it's the right time to have a baby. You let me have my way with you last night, didn't you? Come on now, my sweet little kitty. Take medicine and give me a kiss. Okay, the suspense is building. Welcome to the show, uh, Linda. I really am very glad you came on the show. Linda Wong, a filmmaker, and uh, I know you have many more things that you do, but let's talk. And first of all, welcome to the show. Let me give you the customary. Oh. 
Welcome to the show. Uh oh, I, I hold on a second. I actually hold on a second. I actually turned up the sound just to make sure people. There we go. Welcome to the show. Can you hear me? Yeah. There we go. Welcome. So uh, let's get right into it and talk a little bit about uh, the film that we are watching right now. Um, so first of all, how long have you been making films? Uh, how long have we been? Actually, two years. Okay. And uh, is, is this something that you decided that you wanted to uh, do much longer than two years? And then you finally said to yourself, I'm going to do it. Uh, how did that work? Actually, uh, uh, I got uh, my English uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, I can come from country in industry. So actually, I Because yeah, I know, I know, and I did a, I did a film in uh, China called iBot, and I've got a, a good friends. Um, it's called something Panda. I can't remember the name of the production company, but they were telling me how absolutely difficult it was for them to work in China because it's very difficult to get anything on, um, you know, streaming or broadcast or into the theaters. So uh, that's why I was wondering where you had your education. Uh, actually, uh, I, 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 I got a uh, uh, got a nice master's in China. Mm. I didn't, but part of the part I don't make, make me in that way. So, what so if you, you, you uh, tackle uh, your you head? No, 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 I don't know. 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 Can I ask you, um, other than filmmaking, do you have, I ask this to everybody, sometimes I feel like I'm insulting by asking this, but uh, what do you do, uh, is this that your real job, is that your j uh, sole job, or what do you do when you're not uh, producing films or making films? Mm, actually, I want to be a for job, you know. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I execute mm -hmm. my uh, project. Mm -hmm. uh, I write mm -hmm. my script and uh, organize mm -hmm. the right. uh, to the character. Uh, yeah, yeah, the uh, character. Uh, cast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and we organize my sketch. We play the actor has a hand. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me let me ask you. Uh, so, how did you? I always always curious about how a person comes up with a concept of a film. Is this concept of because I've watched your the short. Is this concept of the film something that you personally understand, or is it something you went? I think that this should be brought out in the open. How did you come up with this concept? Uh, actually, you know. You know we always have to the reflection of the writer. So after I immediately to the cultural reflection, 
you know, I don't know what female or female. Uh, uh, they, they, they have a different cultural background, have different But I thought to do now now. Our system, I realize some issues, topic, use workshops, use workshops. Can I ask you? Can I can I ask you? Uh, how did you cast your actors? Do you know them, or uh, did you cast uh, locally? How how did you come about your actors? Oh, I I I know that before. Not nothing. Just the casting call. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the training training for the actors. I before visit customs that research the video. Yeah, the demo. Yeah, the demo. Yeah. Yeah, and then what they what they do. Yeah, I I try to figure out. Yeah. Interesting. You mean like social media? Yeah, the social media. That's very clever because you know a lot of times actors don't get that what they put on their Instagram or whatever. Also, uh, there are casting directors and directors who will go through these things and go, I don't, don't really know if I want that person because they're either too political or they're, you know, they're too worried about their sleeve tattoos or their nose rings or their, you know, you know, they're, it, it, you don't want someone, you want someone that can encompass whatever you need, but not have a, you know, like too much going on in their head or their body. So I understand that's very clever. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I suggested this. Anyway, for the right director, the right director has the most 75% of their career. So they've done a great for yeah, yeah, for me, it's basically, I'm a writer. writer, writer. So, so I present also know, uh, as, as a precise decision making process. I'm sure they're beautiful. Our kind of people are beautiful. They're charming, they're beautiful, they're beautiful. And if you know the audience in the photo, I try to think about the situation and the thing with the. The, the, the director, the director I, 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 so I don't find yeah I don't find my eyes. Right. Are you uh, currently? Are you in any film festivals? Are you submitting? What What's the What's the objective to the film? I mean, are you trying to enter it? What are you doing with it? Actually, we are going to go to the festival. Before, we all will be in Black Black. 
we need to let others see you as common, as common, you know, to get to know whether we are unique or not. Right. 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 It's a target for me. You know, other others for me that I am into much, much, much. I understand. Uh, well, uh, you know, we really appreciate you coming on the show. By the way, if you're interested and you want to contact Linda Wong, you can check above her head. You can see that she's got her Instagram on there. Go uh, and follow her. If you don't, I'll come after you. Uh, watch this film and uh, be watching for anything else that happens that Linda is doing. It's really been a pleasure. Uh, we hope that you'll come back on again if you do something else. Anything else in the works in the future? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm preparing my project. project. Okay. Yeah, for yeah, the, for uh, my project, one project, uh, uh, black hat is putting something in some way to manifest that thought. Yeah. 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 Also, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. I really appreciate you coming on the show and, and, and please make sure you check us out. Uh, look on to filmfestivallive.com. The story about you and this video will be on there. Thank you very much for coming on the show, Linda. I hope you have a great day. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. Hey, everybody, we're going to take a small break, and when we come back, uh, we're going to be talking to our next uh, guest. I'm the host, so don't get that wrong, okay? Uh, as I told you, the, the show today, I'm talking about seating, and, uh, and, and, and I'm pointing this towards actors, even though uh, you know that this is a film festival live.com. Dot com. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that as a, a professional actor of 40 years, the, the fact of the matter is, is that I get a lot of people that especially since the I'm going to change my lighting. It really sucks right now, uh, especially considering the fact that we are now in such a digital world. And when I started off, we had uh, we had a black and white film. Um, uh, what do you call it? shots and composites and all kinds of crazy stuff and the only way you could actually get your agent to get you anything was to bug the shit out of them i'm kidding uh, we still do that and the fi fact of the matter is is that it has changed but it is the best and i don't i say this all the time and i'm going to say it again is that this is the best time in the world to be a creative to be in the industry we're in it's also the worst yeah so here's why. Because, for instance, yesterday I had uh, an audition two days ago, an audition for Westworld. I'm very excited. It's a recurring, recurring role. I always get that word wrong. And, uh, you know, and I'm talking to my agent. And here's the thing. I have a trick that I do with my self tapes. Shh, don't tell anybody. But I use a teleprompter if it's long. And the reason why I do that is because here's the thing. Um, before COVID, okay, because you obviously I have a beautiful self tape area. And I do really well with my self taste. My agent always go, wow, those are awesome. Point is, is that it used to be that, you know, when I started, you'd have 100 or 200 people going after something, maybe less. Uh, well, in this day and age, before COVID, it, it was really about 2,500 people could be going after the same commercial, same series, same film. Now, because of COVID and, you know, and this is great because, again, I live in L.A., Hollywood, but going back and forth, sometimes it takes me two and a half hours each way. So now they're doing we're doing a lot of self-taping because I don't have to go four or five times a week to L.A. The beauty of this as well is, is that we can produce something that looks really good, get in there, do it right. But I used to tell a prompter a lot of times because if it's a long script, I want to be the first to get it in. 
because I get it in and I basically do the script. And I don't even have a reader, by the way, because I live a little bit farther outside the country. It's my cowboy thing. Yeah. And so I use an app. I'm giving you some really gold here today. It's an app on iPhone. Sorry if you're an Android. I don't know if it does. It's called Celebrity Voices. The cool thing is, is that I do the voices and then I drop it in. My agents, I have six of them around the United States and a couple abroad. They're like, where'd you get the little girl? It's perfect. I'm like, it's me. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, so I'm not going to pay someone on whatever, because they have services for actors to do my voice. My wife certainly wouldn't step in here because she doesn't do this kind of stuff. I've got a seven and 10 year old wouldn't work. So I want the read to be the way I want it. So I do my self tape. Hey, how are you? Doing great. I listen to them because I'm watching the script. And then I punch into audio. It's amazing. It's a, that's for you, everybody. Uh, it's amazing. And I'm just telling you that you have to know your technology. You have to keep seeding because it's not always going to happen every single day. You're not going to wake up and go, hey, all right, what the hell? I just put out 14 auditions. Why aren't, why aren't I getting anything? It may take years, months, whatever. You ne may never hit it. Look at the, uh, you don't know this, you're probably too old. Google the Where's the Beef Woman. She was like 90 before she became totally famous. 90. I hope to God I'm not 90 and I become an A-lister then, but we'll see what happens. All right, let's go to a quick little break. Then we're going to come back into the show with our next guest, Brian. I'm so excited to talk to Brian. I really am. Very excited. He's in the wings right now. He's been making faces at me the whole time. I don't know what the hell's going on. But anyway, uh, he's in there. And of course, at the end of that one, we'll talk to Sal. Sal, you're just going to have to wait. Sal from Andy. He is my good friend and partner in crime on oprime.tv, which is if you're a film festival and or a filmmaker, it might be in there. If it isn't, that's your own fault. And if uh, also we've got uh, filmfestivallive.com. So uh, before we get into that, oh, I dropped my glasses uh, during my last interview. I'm going to grab them. It's my show. I can do that. So with that being said, let's go into a small little spot commercial. Actually, I'll tell you what. Actors, look, um, I know my guest doesn't mind waiting in there. I'm going to show you something. I, I've sent, showed this before, but in case you're new to the show, I'm really big on guerrilla marketing and doing things because you know what? Don't sit around waiting for your agent and try to go, oh God, why am I not getting a call? I put something on Instagram the other day about that little funny bit I did. But I'm telling you that what you need to do is go out and do something different. And so I did this and I'm going to make you watch this about two and a half minutes long. I created an ad, a banner ad, which looked really cool, like a furniture ad, and it said, hey, casting directors, you want to know what you're missing to be successful? And it was really intriguing because I put a little piece of furniture in there, kind of looked like I was trying to sell them something in furniture, and I sent it out to a lot of people, and I'm in the process of buying some ads on breakdown services and stuff like that, and here's what happens when they click it. Hey, thanks for clicking the banner. Now, I know you're dying to know what it is that makes a successful casting office or director or production. And the answer is <laughs> actors. See, you can have a great script, great casting director, a director, producer, but here's the problem. You always need good actors. To be or not to be. But let's face it, there's way too many of us. And we can't market to you, which is odd considering that they call it show business. And that means that there's business in the show. We can't call you. We can't send you an email. We just submit to the breakdowns like the other 4,800 that submitted to you on that casting call with no action packed pitch letter, sales letter. And all we do is stand in line and remain quiet. Let's be honest. Lines are for Starbucks, not for careers. If I still have your attention, I want you to watch this next 46 second video. Now don't go away because there's a quiz after this. Detective Gennaro, I need to speak with Rex Wilson. Rex is already out there on the speedway for his practice run. You know what I mean. Now let me see your shotgun. In here, cool it down. <laughs> Just like your old man, huh? Is there a problem, soldier? I'm asking you a question, Lieutenant. Running in clown shoes. This is gonna be fun. Time! I hope they need more time. Oh. See? That was
wasn't so painful. And I even saw a couple of you laughing. So if you like what you saw, operators are standing by. Yeah, well, yeah Robert's an A-lister great. for sure. Oh, you want to poke him? <laughs> That's my agent. And if you didn't like my approach, well, I'm Daniel Craig, and I hope you enjoyed this commercial. All right, so that's a little marketing bit that I tried to do, and so why not? Because I know we're not supposed to talk to directors and producers and, and casting people, but okay, don't cast me. Anyway, uh, that, that's it. Hey, moving on to our next guest in the show. I'm very happy. I'm very happy uh, to have this man on the show. Uh, I've heard and read and seen a lot of what he's done. He doesn't know this. I have. And so uh, Brian is uh, in the wings, and I'm going to show you what Brian's work looks like. So watch this. Think about it. A world where crime is foiled during its conception. Overpopulation's a thing of the past. The power to oversee everything. I have proof of the Watchmen's edict. It's your choice to accept it. At this point, I just don't know what to do. I've got to stop them. But how? You're just one person. What do you think you're going to do? I'm trying to uncover and spread the truth. It's who I am. And it's what I have to do. So there he is right there. Hey, uh, by the way, let me get myself in a shot here. It looks like this, and then we're gonna go like this. I kind of messed up the shot because I didn't have you come on earlier. Hold on a second, Brian. I need to make sure I can get my uh, shot here. Let's see, there we go, and boom. Welcome to the show, Brian. Oh wait, it says, St it says Steven. Hold on a second here. I gotta get this right. Hold on a second. There we go. I love it, there you are. How are you, my friend? I am very well, how are you? How are you? You know, I'm okay. I'm glad you're in the show, and I'm glad you're here. Uh, uh, let's. Yeah, let, where where are you calling from anyway? Orlando, Orlando Florida. Florida. It's uh, humid there. Always is. Here, here. <laughs> uh, and it's. I used to um, go to Florida quite a lot because of my cowboy stuff. What people don't know, by the way, about Florida is it's one of the. It is the largest beef producing. Uh, state in the United States. Did you know that? Uh, I did because I worked at a work television, television news station. Station, but it's way that you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, being a cowboy, uh, hey, do it over just a little bit here. I'm getting you, you're half in the shot. There you go. There we go. Um, but uh, so you were, oh my gosh, we have a lot to talk about. You work at a news station. Is it what affiliate is it? Uh, uh, ABC. ABC. Okay. I, I work at Fox because I was a Fox Kids Club host for seven years, CBS as a feature reporter, and um, PBS. So, um, boy, oh boy, how long you been there? Uh, 14 years. years. So you are – so you know when I say beta SP. I do. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Oh, jeez. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Now, I, I just have to ask you, we'll get into all of the filmmaking stuff, but uh, so what are you using now, like iPhones? <laughs> no, they've got all types of like, different cameras for different shoots at this point. You know, a lot of the times we're flying drone rules or using GoPro for some investigative stuff. Like the, the regular day of the traditional shoulder on camera, that's a thing of the at this point. Wow. That's, yeah, and that that's crazy because, uh, you know, I remember back in the day maybe even mentioning the word lipstick cam if you're doing a reporting and you're trying to, you know, be clever. But now you're talking about GoPros and, you know, now you can put stuff in your glasses and walk in and go. So <laughs> and, and that's, that's what that's they, they do on the investigative side, walking, walking in the restaurant. The restaurant. Go, go. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, OK, so let's let's talk a little bit. First of all, um, you you shot and you produced and you did you write your film that we looked at? I did. I did. I did. I did. So I guess the question to ask you is, um, uh, did all of this start, because you've been at the station uh, or stations for quite some time, did it start because you went, I can't do this all my life? 
how did it start? Uh, well, I'm only at this station essentially because I've had, I had bills to pay. You know, I've been doing filmmaking far before that. Right. Right. Like this particular film, yeah. being, being that it's that about it's investigative, investigative, investigative reporter uncovering a government conspiracy, it was completely by from working at the news station, seeing this, and just thinking to myself, I got a really good idea. And, and while I'm while sitting I'm there at work, work, you know, know using my laptop, know, working on the script, and I had that, and I got my cast, got that, shot them out, and still be while working overnight at the news station. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I promise you I'll make sure that this feed, because it's live on a lot of different platforms, I'll make sure that your station isn't watching this so they know that you're, you know... <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. too late. We already know you. Yeah, I don't do that good because I when I was working at Fox and CBS, I remember at the end because they sold the Clear Channel, they had light a, a lot of stations. But um, I remember sitting there doing overnight promos. I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> avid, avid. Oh my god! Uh, so. That's what <laughs> No, yeah. that's, that's true. True. Yeah. unfortunately. That's true. Yeah, I bet it is. I bet it is. So let, let, let's talk a little bit about this. You said that you actually started before, um, you yeah, know, the yeah. stations. Um, you, you look like maybe you're 22 or something. Uh, so, oh, sorry, maybe it's the stream I'm looking at. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm in my late thirties at this point. Okay, all right. Mid thirties. Mid thirties at this point. So but yeah, I've been making. Mean, how long? I mean, you you would have been how long when you started uh, started uh, making films? How old were you? Well, when I professionally, I was say twenty two ish. Wow. Like right after I graduated from. from Wholesale, I immediately started to the films that I've made. After that, it, I always like rent out theaters and school tickets. So every film I was making it that day was generating money. So that's when I was a very professional. But I've got VHS tapes when I was making films back in high school. And VHS tapes from when I finally got to Snow Floor. <laughs> Oh DVC from when I got to college. Wow. <laughs> you just, we just went through the evolution of uh, film here in, the, in three seconds. I have somewhere right, right. a uh, DVC Pro with my a bunch of my demos from the station. It's like you look at yeah, them now yeah. and go, you look at them now because the thing is, is that when you look at them then, you're like, wow, it's like that. It's like, so it's like, oh, that was just, a, and then you look at it now and you go, what the, f this looks like shit. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, but, you know, yeah, let, yeah, let's yeah. talk about this. Here, here's an interesting, I want to throw this at you. You know, I remember back being in the station and watching the change in films. And I'm going to tell you one title, Blair Witch. When Blair Witch yeah, came yeah. Into, the, into the world where we were going, oh, my God, I'm in the dark and it looks really screwed up. But, but the world changed. It changed yeah, what yeah, we would yeah. accept <laughs> as quality of film. Uh, how did that affect you? Did you kind of go, oh, finally, I don't have to keep spending, you know, all my time trying to – all the color – I mean, how did it affect you? That, that, that's that's, that's kind of exactly what happened at that, that point. Because what, what, what I realized from what they did, did is that, that they were – on top yeah, of their creative game. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, in yeah, order to yeah, take yeah, a film, yeah, like, I mean, because with that, yeah, that's not, yeah, the, you can't stretch yeah, that out yeah, to make yeah, that yeah, entire yeah, feature yeah, film yeah, alone yeah, unless you're like, yeah, like yeah, okay, how can we tell the story with it? It takes the creativity. And so with that, that just, when that happened, that just opened the doors to you. You don't have to throw all your money into a film. You could be really creative with what's around you and still still put some quality, which is what. They pretty, pretty much, much laid the groundwork of showing you that, yeah, it's very possible to take a little bit, but be really creative and turn it into a whole lot. So that's how I think that's, that's what I got from that. And, and, and do you also think, and I'm holding this up, but do you also think that it sort of flipped the switch to um, not the technology, because that's on its own, but flipped the switch to people accepting uh, films not being, uh, being more artistic because there were, Very people, much. you know, back then there were people, even when Blair Witch happened, grabbing 16 millimeter and doing like real, you know, doing artsy type of stuff. We've always had artsy films. But now, now, again, I've shot a, a, a couple of shorts and one of them has received a lot of awards off of an iPhone. 
And you can. You can do this. So um, yeah, what do you think about technology? I mean, has yeah, it Yeah, same thing. It, 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 it pretty, pretty much opened the doors to show you that we, because again, like, 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 like still working at the new station using GoPro, like, like, we, like, we, we utilize different types of technology, GoPros and drones and steady cams that we have built, like other different types of technology in my films, because knowing now that, again, like what what you have, you could do a whole lot if you just put it, maximize it, you get the most potential out of it, just think outside the box. Absolutely. Yeah, and it doesn't all have to be on a big, big 35 millimeter camera anymore. It just doesn't have to be. It, it really doesn't. And I remember being uh, Fox at uh, Fox Kids, and uh, I always did really what I call, I mean, they were like wacky vignettes about going to a science camp or doing stuff like that. And I remember one time my shooter and I, we came up with a, a, a plate that had a harness on it. it. It wasn't a harness. It was just a, I don't know what the hell it was. And we put an arm on it and we put the camera and I was running through a corn maze. And and this was back before uh, we were doing... Uh-oh. What are you doing over there? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Back in the old days, you're like, how could I do... And then people were like, whoa, that's an interesting shot. Well, now that's commonplace. I mean, it's absolutely. I mean, I've got five gimbals, but you know, you could feasibly, you know, they got all the balance weight ones, you know, all kinds of stuff you can do, but uh, it really has changed quite a lot. You got another one. Are you going to bring it? I tell you, I, for some reason, I keep thinking you're going to grab a dog and bring it up. I, that's just oh, funny that you're saying it because that's yeah, what I'm yeah, dealing yeah, with. She keeps bringing this ball over here. I'm trying to push it out of the way, but she keeps bringing it. You know what? You can bring her up, give her some camera time. It's all good in the hood. I don't care. What kind of dog you got? See, we talk about everything here on Film Festival Live. Now she's all scared. I'm not going to talk She's like, I'm sorry. I didn't sign a waiver to be on the film. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's now she's no model here. here. No model. I guess it's not there in Husky though. Oh wow, that, that you can't pick that up easy. Not easy. That's an armful. Uh, she's like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Oh, oh my God. Oh, look at how pretty you are. I think you should just start talking now, and we'll just pretend that she's you. I love that part. <laughs> we got we got us a TikTok video, bro. Um, right. Anyway, right. so let, let, let's talk about a little bit about uh, the future. Um, now, you yes. grabbed, you grabbed the station uh, because obviously it was a way to make money. But did they come to you? Did you as an ROTC? How did you get in to uh, the stations? It was. It was I was just I'm looking, looking for, some, for some editing. editing. And honestly, oh, it, it was more so. so I was looking, looking for. for Something, Something that I can do, do to test, test out editing software, software on my laptop, laptop at the time. And I was thinking, I need a job where I can edit. I saw they had a post for a video editing position, which is how I started. I started doing that. Did that for a couple of years. And then I was like, I kind of like this, this way this works. So I work overnight. I get off in the morning. And I start my real job as a filmmaker. All the way through all the days, I got weekends off where I'd spend all weekend doing nothing but casting, rehearsal, or shooting every weekend. It, it just works out well. I don't sleep a lot, but it works out well for me. So. Hey, hey, it like you're, you're, you're on television news. I can't hear you. <laughs> just so we're clear, you're not alone. I haven't slept in 20 years, so we're good. <laughs> Because you know what? If I sleep, someone else is awake getting my job. So it's That's all exactly good. how I feel about it. That's exactly how I feel about it. Well, one thing I'll say, and I'm going to commend you on this because I know by watching what you do and listening to what you're saying is that I commend you on the fact that you did basically the same thing that I have done, which is I decided – that I wanted to, I was, uh, I've been in radio for 38, 40 years. I was a, sh a talk show producer. I got into TV. I started, and they went, oh, we just want you to be the host. You're very funny. We think it's great. I'm like, no, no, no. I need to get in that editing bay. Can I do that? And in the meantime, I was doing editing stuff for news on the website because I knew I was web savvy. And this is in the 90s. And I was crashing, I, I was crashing IBM laptops because they wouldn't render. 
And so I'm like, <laughs> you know, so, but the point I'm, I want to commend you on this is that if you make a choice in your life to really go after it, one of the things you should do is potentially find things that keep you in that business. Like if you look at my demo reel, you see that I do a lot of different things from uh, to I'm a professional magician. I'm a, I'm a weapons man. I'm, you know, and and cowboys. Yeah. I mean, the reason why is because I make a shitty waiter. I make a shitty waiter. I never get <laughs> your food on time. I'm real. People are like, oh, he's awesome. But our food was really cold. Point is, is that you, I commend you because you've jumped into a situation that allowed you to basically work at what you love to do and get paid for it and get, your, right, right. you know, your, you get through the learning curve. Commend it, you. It, 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 it forms my operation. Hold on, we'll give you this. that props to my man what's that i said working at the news station it funds my entire film operation it works plus you get to work with you know you got i know you got decent uh yeah and the connection yeah and when i host and when i because i host red carpet premieres for all my films and i'm when i say tickets sell out like this i mean literally all the news anchors bring all their friends all the reporters bring all their friends everybody i've met along the way when i was shooting hey can i make a film absolutely they all and i'm talking about it just it just works which is I got to look up a friend of mine, a very dear friend of mine who used to work here in the um, uh, in the California market, um, Amanda. And I'm wondering if what, what state because I know she's in Florida now. And hold on a second. Amanda, I'm just curious. Here she is. Amanda Gomez. She's a, a, a rodeo queen. OK, enough said. She were. Oh, wow. Look, she's you know what? You know, you're important. When um, you have no bio and you're and you're verified, you're like I don't give That's a shit. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. But she's I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. She's I think she's in. Uh, she's a news anchor. I don't know the station, but oh, it's I'm sorry. She's in Tucson. Nice conversation. Sorry. Moving on. <laughs> oh, wait. I can have it. Thank you. Anyway. Uh, okay, let, let's 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 wrap this up, and I'm gonna play. If do you mind when we leave, if I play your full uh, uh, ta uh, the video that I had started in the beginning? No, 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 no. I would love to. Uh, so, what's the future look like, man? All right, well, well, well pretty, pretty big news pretty in this film. So. so as recently as six months ago, I sold it to, uh, uh, and they've now rebranded it, and it's been released by Summer Hill Films as Doomsday Clock. It's now streaming on Amazon Prime. And, um, <laughs> Wow. You know, that, 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 that's that working out really well. Really We're shooting really our really next really film, really All Rise. We've got our final cast, I mean, final rehearsal this weekend. This weekend. We start we shooting, shooting for that next weekend. weekend. So that's the next that's film that we've got. I've got a feature film, film that we're starting in December. Man, this is a good time right now. So, Brian, how do you manage to do this? Because I know that, you know, working in the grind of a station, you're there. You know, all the time. Are you literally like just going to be shooting this all on location there in Florida, and then going to work in the middle of the night? That's, that's kind of how, how, how it's been. But we only we like have production on weekends. So oh, like we've like been able to go out of state, 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 you know, with Atlanta, if you call that out of state. I mean, that's out of state. state. It's Georgia. Atlanta, it's, it's, it's not like a neighboring state, state, but it's still an out of state production. But. uh we shoot, we shoot on, 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 on we shoot on rehearsal weekends, weekend, but like, like throughout the week, that's when I don't like meet with actors individually or spending most of the, the, the week the writing, writing or storyboarding or, story or, or planning or, planning or, or just, just lock, locking up locations, locations and, and making phone, phone calls, calls, calling people, people getting, getting permission to do things for the most part. But my, that's, that's the Monday through Friday. But the Saturday, Sunday is literally I wake up in the morning, I grab my backpack, pack up my gear, I'm up the door. I, don't, I, I say goodbye to my dog, take her out. Luckily, she's all housebroken and trained and doesn't tear up anything too bad. Uh, she doesn't see me again until the nighttime. Unfortunately. Uh, so, uh, 
Wow. Uh, and you strike me as well as being someone that would be involved with the whole production, not just going, look, I'm, I'm oh, shooting. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah. I imagine that you're location scouting and you're doing all this stuff. And am I right? Everything. I, I go pick up one yeah, shoot yeah, if, yeah, if we're running yeah, late. Yeah, 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 I just I love, love being on set. set. I love I love yeah, actors. Yeah, like, 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 I can't, like, you can't imagine. The fact that somebody's going to spend their time mastering these lines, understanding the vision that I had, bringing it to life. Thank you. You don't get it. Thank you. Whatever, whatever I can do to make your life easy, whatever. I, I'm, whatever an, I'm, an I'm an actor, actor director. director, director everyone tell me that. Like, like, I'm, 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 I'm here, here for the idea. Do you ever step in front of the camera? I used to, but I stopped it when I, again, fell in love with the other side. I realized my talent wasn't on that side. I tried it. Everyone says, hey, you could if you wanted to. So I like sneak, I, I sneak myself in. Like I snuck myself into Washington, even too. There's like a little profile in the FBI is looking for suspects. My picture's on there. So I got in, you know. You do your Hitchcock. You Hitchcock. Oh, well, uh, yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I'm in love with the writing, writing, and, writing and, and watching, watching someone, someone else, else do it better than I thought it because I can I always write something and think it's good. good. But when but someone, someone else says, says no, I, I see it, it and, and they bring it, it. oh, my God, it's just it's, 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 good. That's good to know. I'll know where to send my demo tape. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 just work, I'll work as a local hire. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. My door is open. My door I'm, I'm is glad open. to hear that, brother. Uh, really a pleasure. I want to ask you one of the things I, I usually like to ask people at the end of our conversation, um, because I always people always say to me, they go, I love the interviews. It seems like you guys have been friends for a long time. Yeah, we're like this. I'm over here at this point. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that I always ask for a little bit of what I call the best four letter word in the English language, which is free advice. If you have, I want you to take some time now, think about this. If there's anything, I don't care if it's life. I don't care if it's how to make a donut without a hole. I don't care if it's how to, you know, raise a, a you know, a husky or it says to actors what to do or filmmakers. What is it? I want you to be real and tell me a, a little bit of advice or thoughts you have in, in your closing moments here. Oh, that's, that's easy. Like, my free advice is no matter what you do, whether, like you said, raising a husky, making films, whatever you're doing, writing, never, ever, ever, under any circumstance, no matter what anybody tells you, no matter if you're feeling down or feeling like you want to make attention, you're wasting your time, never, ever, ever quit. Period. 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 It doesn't matter if anyone's watching. Period. Because if you love it, do it, and do it until you physically you cannot do it anymore. anymore. Period. Period. <laughs> I, I, I have this feeling that uh, we might be like brothers because that is my motto. Uh, that, that is my motto for sure. And um, I, I just have to tell you that I, people tell me the same thing. They go, how is it that you walk in and you go to all these auditions? What, what, what did you think about when you walked in and what do you think about when you're done? I'm like, well, when I'm done auditioning, I don't think about it. What do you mean? Right, right. Aren't you like freaking out? I'm like, no, it's done. There's yeah, yeah. literally nothing I can do from I, that. I, but, but, right, right. From that so point on, I can't do anything else. I did, did, did my did best, best out of my, my hands. hands. So in today's lesson from Will and Brian's uh, motivational talk, the point is, is that don't give up, but... You need to, and, and let me back me up on this. You need to learn your skills and you need to hey, not hey, just, hey. like if you're an actor, don't just learn how to be an actor because I did that in my earlier career. People go, oh, well, yeah, you know, he knows his, he's really good, but he doesn't do the like, he won't move something on stage because I did a lot of theater. Well, that changed oh, because yeah. the, uh, the, 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 uh, you are an actor, you acted, you have to understand the whole 360 the dynamic of what you yes, yes, do. do. Yes, you do. Because yes, filmmaking yes, is truly yes, a team game. Yes, there is no, and there's no one, I don't care who is on set, there is no one person better than the other. The star of your film is going to look ridiculous if the person in the background is doing something completely outrageous during this shot. But really, everyone is important. Period. Learn the whole dynamic. Everybody's important. 
it's, it's, it's a real it's tape game. game. And, that's why it's like, and you know what? You just said something that totally me. I was watching a, a series last night, something I don't, uh, and I was watching it, and then they were, it was from the 90s, a monk. A really funny show. And and I remember watching this scene and, and the scene could have been good, but I don't know how they didn't catch us, but there was a guy in the background going, <laughs> what the fuck is he doing? Why didn't they get this guy out of the shot? Obviously they picked it up. They go, there's no way we can do a pickup shot. And they got this guy going. And that's a great example of what you said is, is that it is, there is no I in team. But the point is, is that you have to be able to be cohesive and everybody has to get it. And that consequently is what makes a good project even better is, is that everybody has yes, the yes, same yes, love yes. and they're doing it. That's why there's emotion when you're done shooting because you go, oh, man, y'all were good. We love you. We're going to hang out. Right. You're, on you're on my Christmas list because you, you're right. part of the family. Right, right. right. You are you absolutely, are absolutely, right. absolutely I right. I don't mean to be right all the time. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian Bo, is it Boykins? How do you say Boykins? Boykins. Boykins. I said it right. Damn. You did. Uh, you did. Boykins, of course, filmmaker. I, you know, I didn't have, I don't know why I didn't put this in there, but what is your, uh, uh, what do you call it, your, your Instagram or do you have a website? Um, my Instagram is, is Big Time, Time Director. Director. Time to spell what a Y. My website is BoykinsEntertainment.com. Okay, wait, let's do your Instagram. It's a big, hold on a second, Time. T Y M E Director. T Y. Yeah. T Y M E. That's clever. Big Time and then Director? Yes. And is that the whole Instagram? That's it. That's, it. That's very clever. I love that. By the way, take a look at this right at the top. Wait, here it is. Let me make it bigger if you can see it. Sorry about it. This is all live. This is like live theater, folks. <laughs> if, you, if you fuck up, it doesn't matter. You're still here in the game. All right, big time director on Instagram. Uh, boy, it has been a pleasure. I might have you come on regularly because you're, you're just a – I'm, 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 here. Here. I'm here. I'm here. I get off work at uh, 12 o'clock. I'm free. 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 i Brian, uh, been a pleasure, my friend. Uh, we're going to end you. on this note and showing the rest of your demo. Uh, hang back, get some popcorn, enjoy this, and uh, thank you again, my friend. Thank you. Think about it. A world where a crime is foiled during its conception. Overpopulation is a thing of the past. The power to oversee everything. have proof of the Watchman's edict. It's your choice to accept it. At this point, I just don't know what to do. I've got to stop them. But how? You're just one person. What do you think you're going to do? I'm trying to uncover and spread the truth. It's who I am. And it's what I have to do. So I got to tell you right now, I just heard your phone ringing. I think it's Tyler Perry. He's calling you. He needs you in a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my new friend, Brian Boykins. Uh, thank you, my friend. Great, great. Thank, thank you. Soon, okay? thank, thank you. you. We will. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hey, everybody, end of the show, except for we're going to bring our good friend Sal from on Dion, of course, here. Let me bring him into the stage. I got to get some contact, so I have to keep doing, doing the same. Oh, I dropped my glasses. We're screwed now. Sal, welcome in. Oh, that's not Sal. Wait, Sal, hold on a second here. <laughs> what the I'm hell? Here. Sal, you've changed. Your shirt is so much bigger. Wait, there's Sal. A three shot. 
<laughs> so guess what? Now we have a three shot, and Brian's in the middle. Brian's in the middle. Poke him. Poke. Wait, wrong way. Poke him in the ear. There he is. Uh, I think I think I think um, um, and, and it's, it's just really, really tough, tough because, because you guys got cost so much more all of us that are that are kind of like 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 you are over here tell right by this so you know Brian you went away and he was just saying stuff like Brian walks on water I think he <laughs> I, I, I think he should be the next president but I mean all the you you <laughs> you're gone you were, but we want you to know that uh, I just had to shut him up because you're going to have the big you're going to have a huge bill you're going to get from Sal uh, that you're going to have to pay him off PayPal he accepts <laughs> Hold on one second. Look at every shot. Look at every scene that he creates. All right. There is no detail that this man does not contemplate for you or make sure. I watch a lot of independent films over the course of the last seven years. And Brian's got a good phone number. Yeah. I I, I got to tell you that what I do love about what uh, I saw that you shot, Brian, and again, this is coming from 40 years, is that I love your run and gun. The fact that you're, you know, you don't, you're not, you're keeping it. But here's the thing. You, you can't really just shoot it and go like, you're not going, you're, you just have this really great rhythm, but you're not mm -hmm. jacking it around too much. So, um, you know, really good because it does set the mood and being able to transfer a transition into the next shot and being able to follow through with that. You did a great job on that. By the way, one thing, your guy's mm -hmm. holding the gun. The guy on the left is holding it wrong. I'm sorry. I'm a weapons guy. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad you know this because we called him all the Get your hand off the trigger, bitch. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. But, the, but just so you know, uh, this man is up and coming. And so, let, wait, I'm going to get a selfie. Hold on. Don't move. I can't see yeah, shit. Well, we well, 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 we have a there it is, a screenshot. <laughs> Anyway, uh, really appreciate you coming on the show again, Brian. We'll let you go because I know your dog's probably biting yeah, yeah. your ankles. Be well. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. That is the end of the show. I'm even getting rid of Sal. I don't want to talk to him anymore either. Uh, just because I'm, I can't, my glasses are down there and I don't know what I'm looking at anymore. Uh, who knows what's going to happen here when I'm, when I don't have that. <laughs> Hope you have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you again on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of next week, filmfestivallive.com. I'm Will Roberts. I'm the host. I'm an actor first. See you soon. <laughs>